So customization is still at the very heart of Android and custom launchers are a great way to personalize a device that you own. With that in mind, here are some of the best options you should try in 2024 and maybe beyond that as well. Before you try some of our favorite launchers for this year, we'll try pressing that subscribe button. It's completely free, it helps you get cool content, and it does help my ego and helps the channel grow. If you wanna be an even bigger supporter, hit that join button. I think we have a solid offer for members that gets you stuff for free or with a little paid membership and helps you support the channel. It's a win-win, but now let's get back to the launchers. So Total Launcher is our first option that you should try, and this caters to users who crave extensive customization and really, really unique layouts. Unlike some launchers that completely overhaul the home screen, Total Launcher actually lets you tweak every aspect to your liking. The general consensus online is that Total has a lot more in common with apps like KLWP rather than a lot of Android launchers out there. And while it goes way beyond the norm, it does have a steeper learning curve as a result of that. You can make your phone look exactly how you'd like it to, or you can do what I've done and test drive some of the community themes that you can grab from the Play Store. If you're happy to pay for themes, then you can get some seriously insane layouts that otherwise might take days to replicate. As fun as it is to tweak and tune, I have to say Total Launcher might not be the best option for everyone though. The highly configurable nature means that if you can really make your own device your own, unlike anything else that I've tried for a long time, and for that reason it might be worth it if you're looking for something truly custom to you. We've definitely talked about Niagara Launcher on the channel before, but it breaks the mold when it comes to Android launchers. So forget that familiar grid of icons, Niagara offers a completely different approach. It merges your app drawer and home screen into a single vertical feed, focusing on your most used apps for easy one-handed access. This minimalist approach is a breath of fresh air compared to a lot of launchers, but it's definitely an acquired taste. So instead of a cluttered screen, Niagara relies on a curated list of favorites that you can choose. These sit prominently at the top of this list, followed by an alphabetical layout of your other applications. A customizable widget section above that list displays upcoming events, weather and battery stats. Despite the minimalism, I have to say Niagara feels functional and efficient. Notifications also appear directly on the home screen, saving you trips to the quick settings panel to see those. And an alphabetical sidebar lets you jump quickly into any application, keeping everything within reach. Swiping on apps themselves reveals shortcuts and individual notifications if they're not visible. Folders become pop-up folders here, and they integrate seamlessly into these lists, housing your favorite apps without cluttering the actual home screen view. This unique approach might not be for everyone, as I've noted, but Niagara offers a refreshing alternative for Android users. The free version provides a solid foundation, and you should definitely try it, while the pro version unlocks a weather and agenda widget, custom fonts, and more, for $5.99 per year. Nova Launcher isn't just another name on the list of Android launchers, it's actually the reigning champion and probably the most notable that you will be aware of. For over a decade, it's been the go-to option for users that crave customization on their phones. The latest Nova Launcher 7 build takes things though to a new level. So gone are the days of feeling limited by your stock launcher, Nova 7 empowers you to completely transform your home screen experience. It's faster, lighter, and absolutely packed with features. And if you want to go beyond the basic theming options covered by your phone, well, Nova lets you personalize almost every single aspect of the UI, from folder popouts to grid layouts, icon fonts, and the size of those as well. The level of control is pretty staggering. You can do things like disable animations as well for a streamlined and sped up feel, add quick access options for app pop-up menus, or leverage the enhanced search functionality that, in my experience, surpasses probably anything built in on Android. Nova Launcher 7 isn't just a launcher, it's a gateway to a truly customized Android experience and one of the first ports of call for many people out there. There is a free version of this that offers a generous set of features and Nova Launcher Prime is well worth its money unlocking the full potential for a simple one-time purchase. Although it has a terrible name, Flow Minimalist Launcher emphasizes that minimalism for Android users that are actually out there seeking a decluttered and more focused experience. And unlike launchers that bombard you with icons, Flow prioritizes a clean and functional layout. This feels like a step between a traditional launcher and Niagara by offering a curated list of favorites, that sounds familiar, with a prominent placement if you do choose those. The rest of your apps are still accessible and tucked away in an alphabetical list for easy searching, and essential widgets like the upcoming events, the weather, and the battery stats also sit neatly above that app list, providing quick information to you at a glance. 
Notifications also appear directly on the home screen, a lot like Niagara, saving trips to that notification panel again. And despite its streamlined approach, I think Flow doesn't actually neglect its own functionality. Swiping on apps reveals shortcuts and those individual notifications. Folders also integrate seamlessly into that list as well. And they house your favorite apps without cluttering this view. This focus on simplicity makes Flow a refreshing alternative to apps like Niagara for Android users that want a clean and organized home experience. And the free version does provide a fairly solid foundation. There is as well here a pro option that adds additional features like a weather and agenda widget, custom fonts, and all of those for a one-time purchase though. AIO Launcher opts for a design approach to keep everything you need hourly or daily within reach. Forget endless grids of icons, AIO Launcher condenses everything to a single vertically scrolling feed, although we have seen a few of those already. This streamlined interface prioritizes what matters most to you, and that is your most frequently used applications. AIO Launcher intelligently learns your habits and services the apps that you use most and keeps them at the top, meaning they're readily accessible. Below your favorites lies a comprehensive list of all of your apps organized alphabetically as well for easy searching. And despite its minimalist design, I have to say AIO Launcher doesn't also sacrifice some functionality, something that a lot of other really minimal launchers do. Essential information like weather forecasts, calls, messages, and even music playback controls appear directly on that home screen as well. Built-in widgets keep you updated on important details, while notifications seamlessly integrate without overwhelming that clean aesthetic. AIO Launcher is free and offers a great solution for Android users who crave a clutter-free and efficient way to interact with their devices. So we've sung the praises of Launcher before, but Launcher 14 brings a ton of new features to the table that you need to be aware of. The star of the show is that revamped at-a-glance widget, which is usually seen on Pixel phones. With this smart space integration added here in Launcher 14, you can do things like install plugins to see all sorts of information, from Google Keep Notes to Uber Ride updates. You can even switch between these plugins with a swipe, making the widget super versatile and more useful than it is on Pixel phones. Launcher 14 also boasts a global search function that lets you search not just for your applications, but also system settings and local on-device files. If you're privacy conscious, you'll also appreciate the inclusion of Start Page, a private search engine option. On top of these headline features, Launcher 14 offers a bunch of customization options baked in. You can do things like hide the dock, create custom icon shapes, and use more fonts. The animations have also been drastically improved, especially when switching to the recent apps menu, which was a complaint in previous builds. While there's a rooted option for even smoother animations, I think the non-rooted experience is still pretty solid. And we can also look forward to features like multiple icon pack support and no app draw mode in future updates as it is still technically in beta. If you want to learn more about Launcher 14, go check out Jordan's deep dive into it via the link in the description. So like a lot of these, Stario Launcher prides itself on ditching the traditional icon grid altogether, offering an alternative for Android users seeking a focus on productivity and decluttering the home screen. Unlike launchers that overwhelm you with choices though, Stario prioritizes simplicity and functionality. Inspired by minimalist phone concepts, Stario keeps things clean while keeping those essential features within your reach. It integrates a built-in media player, note-taking capabilities, and even an RSS reader, all accessible from a central hub. But Stario truly shines within its organization. It automatically categorizes your apps, making it easy to find out what you need without endlessly scrolling. Widget support and responsive app and web search further enhance this streamlined experience too. Privacy is another focus point for Stario, with the launcher assuring it collects no app usage or personal data when you do have it installed. However, I will say Stario's focus on simplicity might not suit everyone. If you crave extensive customization options or a highly visual launcher, Stario might not be, or it may seem a little bit too restrictive. But for those seeking a clutter-free and functional under experience that prioritizes productivity, Stario offers a compelling alternative. Completely free, it lets you experience its streamlined approach without any commitment, so it's definitely worth your time. Apologies for butchering this name, but Kvetsio Launcher caters to Android users who want a widget-led approach to their phone. And instead of filling a home screen full of app icons, Kvetsio prioritizes a powerful search function, letting you find what you need quickly which means it might not necessarily be for everyone. This focus on search will no doubt resonate with fans who appreciate efficiency and that clutter-free experience. You can search for apps, files, calendar events, device settings, and more on top of that. The homepage relies on widgets though. It's like a merge of the iOS widget side pane 
but with more powerful Android widgets that you can place here and customize to your heart's content. Although, as an open source project that you can get from stores like F-Droid, Kvetso offers the additional benefit of transparency and the potential for community-driven customization, appealing to users who value control and that unique look thrown in for good measure. However, it is important to consider that updates might be less frequent than some popular launches, but I do think this is one of my favorites on this list and one you may have never even heard of. So calling all Windows Phone enthusiasts, Square Home Launcher is for you, and it's here to bring back that familiar tile experience that you know and love. Unlike most Android launchers that rely on app icons, Square Home embraces a bold grid-based layout filled with live tiles. This launcher definitely transports you back to the glory days of Windows Phone, although they didn't really have that much glory, but each tile can be customized to display your favorite apps, contacts, or widgets. Glance at a tile and you'll see the latest update from your social media feed, check upcoming calendar events, or keep an eye on the weather, all without ever opening an application. But Square Home isn't just about the nostalgia, it offers a surprising amount of functionality for modern Android users. You can create multiple home screens for better organization, explore various tile sizes and effects, and even integrate your wallpaper for a fully cohesive look. Notification badges keep you informed at a glance, while the vertical scrolling and horizontal page flipping provide a smooth navigation experience. Whether you crave the comfort of a familiar interface or simply appreciate a unique and efficient way to manage your Android home screen, Square Home Launcher is a breath of fresh air. It injects a dose of Windows Phone charm back into Android's ecosystem, offering a feature-rich and visually distinct alternative to traditional launchers, and if you're a Windows Phone fan, this might be the one for you. Neo is yet another open source Android application that has some features I'd really love to see in some other launchers, even on this list. The home screen dash is the killer function, at least as far as I'm concerned. And think of this as a quick access panel for your toggles, but in an infinitely easier place for you to reach. You can almost fully customize this little pop-up panel too. Within the app drawer, you can create tabs manually or let these auto categorize so that you can quickly sort through every installed application on your phone. Custom home screen gestures are super powerful, allowing you to do things like search for your device quickly and seamlessly. The optional Neo feed though is another add-on that I think is amazing. That it's like a customizable Google Discover that you can tailor to your heart's content as you can choose data sources with RSS feeds, which is absolutely incredible for content discovery and picking up right where you left off. And you should definitely install this extra option if you do are gonna try Neo for yourself. One potential pain point is the update schedule for Neo Launcher, as it hasn't technically been updated for over a year, well, October 2022 was the last update to be precise. That release does note that Neo Launcher technically supports Android 13, but it might work on your device. So this is one to try out for yourself. And it seems to be working fine on Android 14 on a couple of our devices. It's really hard not to love the sheer volume of options that we do have on Android. And last but not least, in the world of Android launchers, we have Pi Launcher. It's an incredibly different experience to any option that we've shown so far. And instead of the usual grid of icons, Pi Launcher presents your favorite apps in a customizable and floating circular dock that you'll see when you tap your screen. So you can swipe around and open recent applications from this circular floating dock once you've tapped, but most of the time you'll just see your wallpaper. This really does feel so alien, but it's unique and especially eye-catching. Luckily, you do still have an app drawer in there. You'll have to access this by tapping the center of that floating pie, which will open the app drawer itself. You can scroll through this and open applications or tweak the settings from the top right of this. There really isn't much you can do in terms of customization, but it's a nice, light, and even strange take on the traditional Android launcher that I think you might want to try. But that overall is your lot. 11 Android launchers, a few you know, hopefully a few that you didn't. All download links to all of these launches we've featured are down there in the video description. And a big shout out to our YouTube channel members, which you can see on screen now. You are true legends. We love you. Thanks for supporting the channel. And I want to say thanks to all of you, no matter if you're a member or not. Thanks for watching, and I will speak to you later.